Hi guys, Dane here and welcome to my July 2021 reading wrap-up. This year is just, it's just whizzing, isn't it, mate? Dane reads. So, uh, the first book I have to talk to you about is uh, Nine Tomorrows by Isaac Asimov. So this is a short story collection. I always enjoy Isaac Asimov short story collections, so it's a four out of five for me. I had read at least one of the stories, uh, The Dying Night Before, um, but, you know, it was still a lot of fun even to revisit it and, I, and it and that one was kind of like a mystery as well and I couldn't remember how it resolved so it was worth a reread. Um, all in all the only thing this was missing really were like his introductory notes on each of the stories because I do enjoy reading those but the stories themselves are great. The concept is uh, you know nine short stories and the tomorrow's bit is that they're like Asimov's take on what the future will look like. So for example in one of the stories uh, people have forgotten how to do mental arithmetic and we just rely on computers for it and there's even this notion like ha we can't do that we're not computers computers compute um, but it kind of comes into play because man has over relied on computers to take over that for him and somebody sort of rediscovers these old methods of you know doing mental arithmetic and long division and stuff like that so yeah four out of five worth reading banquets of the black widowers by isaac asimov this is a collection of mysteries it basically takes the form of there's this like the black widowers club or whatever they meet up i think once a month they have some food they have some whiskey and they have a different guest each week and the rules are basically they can ask this guest anything they want they're not allowed to hide anything and people kind of go to them with their mysteries and then the black widowers come together and try and solve it so you got a lot of fun stuff stuff in here. Um, it's very like armchair detective-y. They tend to solve the mysteries all together just there at the club without you know doing any legwork and stuff like that. Overall I would give this a 4 out of 5. There are plenty of other Black Widowers books as well. <laughs> Look it looks like I've got a tiny body. Uh, yeah, did enjoy and I will be checking out more of the Black Widowers books soon. Uh, so we have Tales of the Black Widowers, more Tales of the Black Widowers, the case, the case book of the Black Widowers, the Union Club Mysteries and Asimov's Mysteries. I've read Asimov's Mysteries. Um, so yeah, very cool. Good start to the month. Oh, I've gone red again. I don't know why this happens sometimes. I wasn't red when I started filming and then I bent down to pick up my books and now I'm red again. Anyway, speaking of red, I have read uh, Distraction Pieces by Scroobius Pip. I'm no longer red. I turned away and turned back and it, anyway. Uh, Forward by Ramesh Ranganathan. This is um, basically, Scroobius Pip has a, a podcast which is quite a successful podcast. He has a lot of well-known guests on there and this is kind of an accompaniment to that. It's basically transcripts from the podcast shoved into a book. Not gonna lie, I don't know how necessary it really is. Like, it didn't really add anything to it. You might as well just listen to the podcast, although admittedly, I haven't done that. <laughs> but um, as somebody who, like, I work with transcriptions a lot and work doing, like, show notes for podcasts and stuff, and this is literally just the transcription, like, tidied up so there are no grammar and spelling mistakes and stuff, but it's just the transcription with, like, okay, it's kind of loosely grouped into themes with, like, maybe a one-page introduction by Scroobius Pip on each theme, but, other than that, it's just transcriptions, so, I don't know, wasn't that interesting, like, it would have been more interesting if he'd weaved it together into some sort of narrative and shared some of his own, like, more of his own thoughts and stuff throughout it, so, anyway, I gave it a 3.5, it was alright, it's just a low 3.5. And speaking of low 3.5s, here we have uh, Nemesis by Isaac Asimov, so the concept here is basically, okay, there's a new star found and it's going to come into our solar system and it's not going to hit the sun or the earth or anything but it's going to come close enough to mess everything up. When's this going to happen you ask? 5,000 years. So the stakes are pretty low because it's in 5,000 years. Everyone's trying to stop something from, you know, they're trying to escape from the earth but they've got 5,000 years to do it. And I'm like, you know, we live in a world in which like global warming and an overpopulation could kill us all within 50 to 100 years. So they didn't seem like much of a threat, you know? And I also didn't really care for most of the characters in it either, so... Anyway, it was okay. Like I say, low 3.5 out of 5. Wouldn't particularly recommend it. It's only one, really, if you're a die-hard Asimov fan. Um, and yeah, it was also like 100 pages too long. I just think Asimov's a better short story writer anyway, to be fair. But uh, this was sort of brief for that. Hello everybody, got a whole bunch of books to wrap up for you today. The first one is Forward the Foundation by Isaac Asimov. So this is the second book in the Foundation series, but actually the last one that he wrote. Uh, follows Harry Seldon um, and basically the fall of the first empire pretty much. Or it's not the whole fall, but certainly the empire is falling. Um, it was weird because I think for the first 150 pages or so it wasn't very good and then it suddenly really picked up and then it was quite moving at the end because uh, Harry Seldon dies of old age at the end of it, spoiler alert. 
Um, but Asimov himself only finished work on this a couple of weeks before his own death, so because of that, as I say, it was quite moving. Uh, strong 3.5 out of 5 for this one, and I will be reading more Foundation books soon. Then I read The Essential Spike Milligan by Spike Milligan. So uh, this is another one published after his death, actually. Um, and this has just got a bunch of different excerpts. It's got some of his war diaries in it. It's got a couple of chapters from his novels, some of his poems. Um, because I've read quite a lot of Spike Milligan by this point, I would estimate I'd already read at least half of this book. So I kind of whizzed through it, you know. Um, but hey-ho, I'm trying to reduce my current TBR. I'm down to 41 books currently reading, so that's very exciting. Don't know if I've ever been sub-40, so trying to get to there soon and uh, yeah probably like a 3.5 out of 5 I don't know if I'd actually recommend it as a starting point though because like a lot of the stuff that there are excerpts from like his novel it's like you might as well just read his novel rather than read chapters 5, 8 and 31 or whatever it might be but um, if you're a, a Milligan fan it's a good place to, to go to I guess and then I read The Truth by Peter James so Peter James is a crime novelist he's known for his Roy Grace books uh, this one was written before he started the Roy Grace books, I think, sort of late 90s. Follows this couple, the man uh, owns a computer software business, the woman is an editor for uh, a publishing house. And they buy this new property but then they're sort of low on money and then this rich guy basically offers to bail them out if she'll be a surrogate mother for his child. And uh, it's kind of a thriller. It was, it was pretty good, probably like a 3.5 out of 5, maybe a strong 3.5 out of 5. Um, Peter James is just a good writer in general, you know. Then I read Writing Home by Alan Bennett. So this is a collection of like letters, um, essays. Uh, it's got the full text of the, the woman in the van, which I'd already read. It's got a few photos in it as well. Uh, this was my bedtime book, and I'm glad it was because I only read like 15, 20 pages at a time. Um, it wasn't the best. I gave it a three out of five. The woman in the van is great, but you can just get that by itself anyway. And the rest, there were a lot of like um, obituaries for people I'd never heard of and stuff. So hey ho, what are you gonna do? And then I read The Prince by Niccolo Machiavelli. So this is basically the Italian art of war. Um, it's like, this guy basically, he was trying to curry favor with a prince and so he wrote this book for him that's like, kind of military insights and that kind of thing from history. So because of that, it reads almost as much as a history book as anything, although it does kind of, it's like a mixture between a history book, the art of war and Aesop's fables, you know? Uh, but interesting enough, it was only about 100 odd pages. I don't think I would have stuck with it if it had been any longer, but I, I am very much glad that I read it. And I would read more Machiavelli at the future, just not in the immediate future, you know? So yeah, 3.5 out of 5 for this. Hello, it's me again. One thing I need to mention here as well is that I read Through a Glass Clearly by Isaac Asimov. I think I actually read this in June, uh, but it slipped off my wrap-up for some reason, so I'm wrapping it up here. I actually can't really remember it. I feel like it was short stories. Weirdly, the phrase through a glass clearly, it comes from a, like a biblical thing, and that was referenced in another book that I read recently as well. Uh, I'm just gonna give it a 3.5 out of five here. I'm basically just mentioning it for completion's sake, you know, so yeah. Hello everybody, I've somehow missed off, I don't actually need to check, I've somehow missed off two books from my wrapper. One of them was Antic Hay by Aldous Huxley. Cracking novel in the vein of John Steinbeck, really did enjoy it. It's one of those where the plot matters less than the characters, and the characters actually are kind of vehicles for Huxley to share his own views on various bits of life and philosophy and all of that stuff. But really beautifully written, and as I say, if you like John Steinbeck, you're probably going to like Huxley, at least his earlier work. So uh, I gave that a strong 3.5 out of 5. Then I read Milk and Honey by Rupi Kaur. This is a poetry collection. Um, it did feel a lot more like naive and simplistic than a later book whose name I cannot remember that I already read. Uh, I still thought it was okay. There were some good bits in there. There was also a fair amount of cringe. A lot of it was like relationshipy as well. Um, but then there was some stuff to do with like rape and abuse and all of this stuff. Lots of trigger warnings going into it. Um, but what Kaur does really well, which is what I admire in poets, is she can take something very complex and just distill it into really simple language. And it's very difficult to do, and she does it very well, I think. So I gave it like a weak 3.5 out of 5. And then I read Mother Tongue by Bill Bryson, The Story of the English Language. So I'd been putting this off for a while just because it looked dense and scary and intimidating. And it did actually take, like, it took me like four days to read it, so longer than I would expect for a book of this thickness. Um, but it was really interesting to go through it and to learn a lot about the roots of various English words. I think if you speak French or German, um, you're going to take a lot more out of this as well because it learns, you, you learn a lot about like the, lang the way languages interact and stuff. Actually, maybe German not so much because English doesn't take many words from German, but definitely French and like Latin and stuff. 
And uh, yeah, it also goes into the differences between different dialects of English and the way that history is shaped and the way that geography is shaped and all of that stuff. I did a full review of it, so do check that out. I gave it a 4 out of 5. Hello good people of the internet, I have two books to wrap up for you today. Uh, oh actually no, I have one because I already wrapped up uh, Mother Tongue, didn't I? So I've also finished reading Depression and How to Survive It by Spike Milligan and Anthony Clare. This started out as a bedtime book for me but I kind of ended up enjoying it I, as much as you can, a, a non-fiction book about depression and, and uh, well, manic depression basically, bipolar disorder. Um, but yeah, I'd give it like a 3.5 out of 5. There's lots of like autobiographical bits about Spike Milligan's life as well, kind of relating the condition back to his own experience of it. Um, I suffer from depression myself as well as anxiety, so uh, there was a lot in here that was of interest to me. It was kind of outdated, I'm not going to lie, but overall glad I read it, 3.5 out of 5. Hello everyone, just two books to wrap up for you today. The first is Shakespeare by Bill Bryson, so this is like a biography of Shakespeare containing as much as we know about him, which isn't actually that much. Very interesting read though, told in Bill Bryson's Inimitable Touch. Funnily enough, there were quite a few bits of this that had crossover with um, uh, Mother Tongue, or Mother Language, or whatever it is that I read recently. Because um, Shakespeare obviously coined a lot of new words, and so there was a bit of that in this, as well as in that other book. Overall though, do recommend, four out of five, uh, especially if you want to know a little bit more about Shakespeare. It's uh, a little, pretty good, uh, pretty good, um, what's it, resource for that. And then I read Chrome Yellow by Aldous Huxley. So this is his first novel as far as I understand. Uh, this, like his, his other ones that I read recently, like Antic Hay, uh, had a lot of John Steinbeck vibes about it. It also read a bit like Agatha Christie. It was kind of a combination of the two, minus the plot, but with crap loads of characterization, uh, a lot of musings, a lot of like philosophy, all that kind of stuff. Really did enjoy this one, so I gave this one a four out of five. And I have some non-fiction Aldous Huxley next, Beyond the Mexique Bay, I think it's called. So I'm going to get to that soon as well. Then I read Psycho Grand Issue 2 by David Leach. So this is um, basically a comic. Uh, Psycho Grand is this old lady who, uh, she gets up to all sorts of hijinks. So for example, a guy's listening to music very loudly on the tube and um, she goes around giving everyone earplugs and they're all like, oh, that's very nice, sweet old lady. And then once everyone's got their earplugs in, she beats the crap out of this dude and then turns it up and she's like, I love drum and bass, me. Uh, so yeah, lots of fun, uh, probably a 4 out of 5 I reckon, and uh, I will hopefully get to more Psycho Grand soon. Then we have 2012 A Night of Desolation by SF Khan, so I'm not really going to review this, basically uh, I got this because I edited it, and so I, I kind of want it in my permanent collection as one of the books that I've edited for one of my clients. And um, this is set in Afghanistan, it follows an American soldier, um, and it, it looks a lot about like how we're all just people, basically. Um, but there's a little bit of like conspiracy theory stuff going on as well. Yeah, I mean, I'll give it 3.5 out of 5 here, just because that's my default rating. Um, on Goodreads, I'll probably mark it as red and do a review, but I won't give it a star rating. Or maybe I will, I don't know, we'll see. And then we have Beyond the Mexique Bay by Aldous Huxley. So this is a traveller's journal, travel writing of his time in uh, South America. There's a lot of history to it, a lot of like reflection. Um, kind of in the vein of 2012 in that it looks at uh, how we are all just people at the end of the day. But he does have a few bits where it's kind of troubling, like he talks about how certain races are just mentally inferior to other races and all this kind of stuff. Um, but he does look at some interesting stuff as well, so uh, why some religions are like the Aztec religions um, and uh, or was it the Aztecs or was it the Mayans? I think it was the Mayans who did a lot of like human sacrifices and then you've got like other religions like Buddhism which tend to be more peaceful. He does mention Christianity as one of the more violent ones which I think is fair enough. Um, but yeah, interesting little snapshot into history and kind of cool travel writing but not as good as his novels I don't think. I still gave it a 3.5 out of 5 though. So uh, that's where we are. Hello everybody, got some books to wrap up for you today. So the first is Foundation's Edge by Isaac Asimov. This one I gave like a 3.5 out of 5 to. To be honest, I'm at the point where all the Foundation books are just a bit samey and I'm not particularly enjoying them. I'm kind of just going through them for the sake of it. Um, I, and I also I find as well that they start very slowly and then get better as they go in. I think that's because each of them can be read as a standalone so it takes a while for them to sort of re-establish themselves and for the storyline to get going. But um, yeah, I am still glad I read it and I will be finishing the Foundation series. I think I only have one more to go now, so yeah. Then I have The Colour Gone, Quest for Answers by Ryan Maletti and Marlene Bryan, FHD. Uh, this one I'll just give a 3.5 out of 5 to as my general rating. 
don't want to talk about it too much. It's a client's book. I help them to edit. And uh, so this is me getting my copy of it. Hence why the rating is just my default rating, because I can't really rate it, you know? Not fairly or unbiased, anyway. Then we have Volta by Nikki Dudley. So this is the winner of the Virginia Prize for Fiction. Uh, this is a crime novel, contemporary crime, set in 2020, minus the pandemic, though. Uh, very twisty and turny, uh, quite dark, but quite humorous in places. The characterization in it was great. I was going to do a full review, but long story. Basically, my tabs didn't materialize, so uh, yeah. But it uh, was very good. I would recommend Nikki Dudley as well. She runs a, a magazine called Street Cake Magazine. Uh, I've had a few of my poems in there. Uh, she went to the same uni that I went to, although we were there at different times. Although I have met her once, once or twice at events and stuff. And uh, I was very impressed by this. Uh, I think it's very promising and um, I'm looking forward to reading more full-length novels by her. I've only really read poetry so far. And then we have Fauna, Stories by David Hartley. So this is published by Fly on the Wall Press. They're mostly known for their poetry. When they do do fiction, it's quite innovative stuff and this one is no different. Um, bunch of stories basically themed around the idea and the concept of animals. And um, yeah, really well written. Kind of, I would say, like almost literary fiction. But, uh, as I say, quite experimental. Really good stuff though. Um, can't really tell you what any of the stories about because they're all nuts. I mean, the first one was probably my favourite actually about foxes. Broadcast of the foxes. Uh, yeah, just very, very experimental stuff. And as I say, with these, this animals as a theme, did a lot of like expectations subverting. Even though I went in with kind of no expectations. So overall, this is a pretty solid four, maybe even a four point five out of five. So, those are all the books that I read in the month of July, it is now August, uh, so as always, thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so what you thought of them, hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video, thanks a lot, bye bye.